More controversy for Al Salt Lake, disappointment for Hercules Gomez, and Connor Casey nears his return next on The Daily. Welcome to The Daily. It is Thursday, April 26th. I am Andrew Wiebe, and of course, next to me, Simon Borg. And uh, Simon, the lone MLS game on the uh, docket last night, Dallas hosting RSL, a 1-1 draw. But once again, just a few days after RSL had a few red cards go against them that they didn't agree with, more controversy. Jason Kreis not happy about the PK call in the first half. That Alave Steven Lennart controversy from last weekend still hasn't died down. And then you have the PK call just before halftime. Tony Beltran uh, extends the arm, in my opinion. And so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good PK, stopping the ball from getting to George John, who was right behind him. Uh, so I think it was a good PK. It rewards FC Dallas, who really owned that first half. Breck Shea putting it away. Jason Kreis did not agree, of course, but RSL came back and got the draw. Emiliano Bonfigli, his first goal in MLS, impressed you, Simon. It did, and it rewarded Real Salt Lake for a great second half by them. And FC Dallas, they, they kind of lost grip of the game when Carlos Rodriguez goes down with that horrific uh, elbow injury, uh, but all, all reports are that he's doing better now. Uh, but Bonfili gives RSL's attack a different look compared to Paulo Jr. Paulo Jr. likes to operate from the outsides. Bonfili, he's good at making that run on the inside, and it fits Real Salt Lake's game. That was a great penetrating run by him, but Ugo Ehemelu caught out of place on that, on that play. Yeah, a note on Carlos Rodriguez the diagnosis right now is a dislocated elbow. Also for FC Dallas, Jackson making his debut after returning on loan. RSL is now tied for first in the Western Conference, although San Jose do have two games in hand. While Dallas and RSL played to a draw, there's no doubt that the biggest game in CONCACAF last night was that second leg of the CONCACAF Champions League semifinal. Monterey getting a goal in the 82nd minute to ruin Hurt Gomez and Santos's dreams, a 2-1 win for them. They win the Champions League and advance to the Club World Cup. A, uh, a tough pill to swallow for Santos, Simon. But it was a game that went the way people expected it. Uh, Santos absolutely peppering Monterey in that first half. Countless opportunities. Jonathan Orozco, the goalkeeper from Monterey, coming up big on a few occasions, but Santos misfired on, on, on several. Uh, and then they get the two goals, though. Great goals by Daniel Ludueña and Oribe Peralta. Uh, so everything was easy even at that point. Uh, Monterey had won 2 nothing in the first leg, Santos was up 2 nothing, and then Santos after that second goal, they lost grip of the game and then Monterey started now getting their shots off and they finally got one with Neri Cardoso. It took a deflection uh, and it took um, Osvaldo Sanchez out of the play and that did it for him. A second straight title for Monterey and, and Simon, I don't think we're seeing the end of these two teams in CONCACAF Champions League. Next year, another tough road to climb for MLS squads. Uh, what, what do you make of it? I agree, Andrew. Monterey and Santos, uh, two established squads. Uh, they know how to play together and they they have experienced players and these experiences in CONCACAF uh, even help them further. So I think they're going to be two powers that MLS clubs are going to have to contend with next year. Santos is already in for next year's edition. Monterey still with some work to do, but they will advance to the Club World Cup. That will be held in Morocco in December. Back in MLS, the forward tandem that won Colorado MLS Cup may be close to being reunited, Simon. Omar Cummings has been doing the business for the Rapids this year, but Connor Casey's still out. Looks like he may come back this weekend for Oscar Pereja. Finally back from that Achilles injury after a long rehabilitation and that partnership, uh, it, will, it will work wonders again, there's no doubt. And Colorado, that attack looks like it needs the big target guy that Casey is to really get all the parts moving better. Uh, Omar Cummings has been the, the only guy up there all alone and Casey has said it himself. He says, I think Omar Cummings misses me and I miss him. So. Yeah, Cummings not the point man that Casey is. Oscar Preha saying that uh, Casey likely to be a substitute, not necessarily a starter this week. Back on the East Coast, though, a team really getting hit hard by injuries right now. The New York Red Bulls, uh, Stephen Keel yesterday, out for three weeks or so with that stress fracture in their back. They're also missing, what, William, Wilman Conde, Tamu Tainio, Roy Miller, Marquez with the suspension. What do you make of this, Simon? And you could probably add on Jan Guler solely. Depending on how that MRI comes back, they're looking at his calf. Uh, so if that's another long-term injury, you're talking about the entire Red Bulls back line out for the next month. Mm -hmm. The only guy is Marcus Holgerson, uh, and he's a newcomer from Sweden. And even with that first team back line, Simon, they had not been particularly good defensively this year. Another quick note on the injury front in Kansas City. Seth Sinovic, a broken right hand, he'll be out for two weeks. 
Also check out on MLSsoccer.com, Power 5 continues today with the midfield generals, Kyle Beckerman. Also, later this afternoon, Extra Time Radio will be available on Buzzsprout and iTunes. That's all we have here for today on The Daily. We'll see you tomorrow.